All right, so thank you very much for joining. And uh, this is the second lecture of the semester. So let's take a recap of what uh, I taught in the lecture one. Please, if you cannot hear me loudly, let me know so that I can amplify my voice in a way. Okay. So in the first lecture, we the goal was for us to actually understand data, data, and also information. And then somehow I tried to link that to information systems. And also made mention that information technology and then information systems has difference, or there's a difference, there's a difference between the two information technology and information systems. And basically, I try to establish the difference between the two. Uh, any question from last week? If you have question from last week, you can ask. Otherwise, I move on. All right. So today, we are looking at information systems in business today. But the focus is on the role of information systems in business. So what role do information systems play in business? So the role of information systems in business. So the, these are the learn, learning objectives for today's lecture. At the end of the lecture, I expect you to understand the effect of information systems, in other words, IS. Sometimes we use IS as abbreviation on business and relationship to globalization. So you have uh, businesses in Ghana here, and you may also have, or you may have branches in other places as well. How is information systems used to globalize, or let's say achieve uh, globalization, help you to be able to link up with all your business all over? So like I said, the key term is rule of information systems. Now, the next is to look at why information systems are so essential in business today. And then I keep saying that information system now is the base and the foundation to business survival. So for you, if you want to go into business and you say that uh, you were born before computers, so you are not so good in computers. In this case, the business you are going to run is going to be purely manual. Then I'm telling you, it's going to be very difficult for you to stay in business. You will be extinct soon. Then the third objective is to look at the academic disciplines. With information systems, it is being studied in several other in several disciplines. You go to economics, they have ways of handling information systems. You go to the business school, the same thing. You go to the computer science, they also have different way of also handling information systems. And lastly, uh, we look at what we call socio-technical system. What is it? And of course, social technical system are directly linked to information systems. And I will explain that. Of course, information system is a social technical system. Now let's move on to today's, what we're gonna do today. Now, before I start, let me ask this question. And it's open to the class. You know, I keep saying that I like that we all discuss in class because there are a lot of things that you know and I don't know. So my question to the class is that, let us, I'm asking this question, uh, what are the rules of information systems in our business today? Can you mention some of the rules of information system? What role do information system play in our businesses today? Please, if you want to answer, all you need to do is to just raise up your hand. And I know that many of you, all of you can use Zoom. There's a place where you can use to raise up your hand. And I would also like to add that, uh, you should contribute well. Let me notice you uh, because your contribution may play a role in your final grade. Uh, I'm, you know, the, the training I had for some reason, I mean, sometimes you don't even write exams. It can be just class discussion. At the end of the day, you are giving a project and that's it. All right, so uh, please, uh, those of you with the IDs, I want you to change, just change your IDs to your name, put your name there. I'm particularly interested in the game rather than the ideas. Okay, Bernard. Bernard, take the floor, Bernard. 
Okay, okay doctor. Please, I'd like to address by uh, Shadow. Uh, say it again. I want to be addressed as Shadow. Uh, you want to be addressed as Shadow? Okay, Shadow, please yes, go ahead. Yes, okay. Uh, so please, okay. Uh, um, information system helps um, a business to gain competitive advantage over other businesses without the information systems. Okay, yes. Thank you very much, uh, Shadow. Uh, let me take uh, Bashiru. Bashiru. The, please, um, the introduction of information systems to our businesses makes us speed up our transactions. Okay, thank you very much, Shadow. Uh, sorry, uh, Bashiru, rather. Okay, let me take Linda. Sir, the introduction of information systems helps the business keep accurate records for future use. Very good, uh, uh, Linda. Uh, so, uh, Alex. Alex. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Alex, uh, go ahead. Yes, uh, it facilitates uh, uh, smart decision taking in businesses. Okay, good, Alex. Very good. So you are all making a, a, a nice contributions. I saw one, okay, well, uh, Prudent, uh, there was the name, okay, she went off anyway. All right, so thank you very much for your contribution. And all how you have said actually, uh, it's in order, information system, some of the roles that information systems play. And then today, if I'm talking about information systems, you know that it also encompasses the procedure and the people as well. But if I mention information technology, you know that it's minus the people and then the procedures or the policies and what I do. But as time goes on, I'll be using information systems and information technology interchangeably, depending on the context. All right, so now let's start. You have made a valuable contribution and that is another. Now, uh, I have this question, how information systems are actually transforming businesses today? And you have said a lot. If you look at the first point, uh, imagine mobile digital platforms. You realize that uh, nowadays, businesses are all uh, automating some of their processes, not all, some of their processes, in a way that you know they are, they are introducing mobile apps to make uh, work more flexible, usually at the operational level. If you look at the banking sector, for instance, now they have mobile apps. And then uh, if you look at the telecos, they are also, they have also developed, uh, or let's say leveraging on this USSD technology for people to be able to make some transactions and also uh, this mobile wallet and all that. So mobile digital, mobile digital platforms are being imaged and uh, businesses are harnessing the potential to be able to increase their operations. Then you look at another aspect called the growing business use of big data. And I know that somebody will be wondering, or people have heard of the word big data, big data, what is it at all? And if you go anywhere at all, they will tell you that big data is transforming businesses and all that. So let me, let me ask, put this question to the class. What is big data? Because we are looking at how information systems are transforming businesses. One, because of the introduction or imagine of mobile digital platforms like mobile apps, uh, the food uh, companies are all developing apps to aid their operations. Now, the next is the big data, growing business use of this big data. What is big data? The floor is open. Please, if you, if you can answer, you just let me know. Big data. Yes, uh, Bashiru. Bashiru. Uh, my understanding of big data is managing a very large or huge form of data. Okay. Very large. Okay. Romeo. Yes, yes, big data. Big data, what comes to mind is large data sets that enables one to develop trend and analysis and make projections. Very good, uh, Romeo. Any other? Any other? Okay, so you see, uh, I think that Romeo has actually summarized it all, but let me add it. You know, sometimes when they, they talk about big data, people get confused. They think that it's a very huge technology. 
you know, is a technology. Actually, big data is not a technology. Uh, as Rumi uh, put it out, big data is just a data set. It's just a data set. But the word big means that the data is large, is huge, and very big. Now, before, uh, let's see, even before the emergence of social media and what have you, we were generating some kind of data. And the kind of data that were being generated at the time, you could easily use a traditional analytical tools. Analytic, analytical tools like regression uh, and others, or let's see correlation and others to analyze it easily. That data set wasn't too huge, but as time moved on, where we got the social media era, you realize that uh, the population is increasing. Many people are tweeting. We are generating a lot of data on the internet. So the data has become so big, so huge, that the traditional analytical tools make it so difficult to analyze. And then the traditional analytical tools could not actually help us to be able to tell the future. What it does mostly is to be able to diagnose the data and do some descriptives and some few other inferential statistics. So uh, new and sophisticated approaches emerged, like artificial intelligence, which gave birth to machine learning, then machine learning also gave birth to the deep learning. And of course, we have other uh, 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 technologies as well. So these sophisticated technologies were developed to aid or to help in analyzing the data that is huge or what we call big. So technically, when you want to define big data, you say that it is actually a large data set that can be analyzed using modern computational techniques like machine learning and then uh, deep learning approaches. So the data sets before the data sets uh, before the emergence of social media and other digital platforms. By then it was easy using traditional approaches to analyze. But this time it's so huge that we need to develop new technologies in managing and also analyzing it. And in managing that is where we have the hard and other technologies, data warehousing, data leak, they are all tools that can be used to manage this data that is big. So after managing it, then you may want to now look into the data and use the data to tell the future or to forecast tomorrow. So, Hello? Maybe, Johan is up. Yes, sir. I wanted to say that you keep fading in and out. So I don't know if Me. it's my or it's coming from you. Uh, can someone confirm whether I'm the one, the problem is from here or is from Mavis? Can someone confirm that? Yes, sir, please, it's coming from your end. My end? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm OK. Hey. Everything is clear here. Everything is clear here too. Yes, everything is clear. Yeah, everything is clear. Yeah. It's clear. It's probably the answer from your end. Okay. Please check yours. Uh, okay, all right. Very good. So now let's move on. So because I'm using TableNet and here my network is so strong. That is why I'm a bit confused anyway. But that's fine. Sometimes it happens. Okay. So that is big data. Now let me, you see, I like to do this and then practicalize it. Uh, I did work for uh, UNICEF. And then UNICEF, they have a technology they call Argo platform. And this Argo platform is a technology that people call in to seek for advice and seek for solution to their challenges. They have been able to generate a huge data set. In other words, you can see big data. Now, so they needed someone with some analytical skills to do some kind of analysis to glean intelligence from the data. So uh, I was given the chance or contracted to do this. So what I did was to apply a technique from machine learning, we call it an unsupervised machine learning technique. We call association rules mining. Association rules mining, 
in marketing field, marketing people like using that large technology because in marketing, they call it basket analysis. So association with mining is to find out how products are associated. For instance, uh, let's say you have Mecom. Mecom has a lot of branches in Ghana. And these branches, they sell a lot of things. Now, uh, because of the transactions, they do have daily. This transaction is able to, you're able to archive all these transactions to have a very big data set. Now, I can apply this association rules mining to see how the product, the purchasing pattern of products associated, associated to each other, are associated. For instance, someone comes to buy a bed. Maybe there is likelihood or there is a, a higher tendency that if the person buys a bed, you buy a mattress. Or in this case, we say that bed and mattress are highly associated. Some of them are actually, uh, it's easy to predict. There are some that you cannot easily predict. You can, you, you may, you may, you, you be surprised that someone will come to uh, the shop to buy bed and the person may also want to buy, let's say, uh, a television. So with the data set, you can be able to establish which of the products are strongly associated. So as a marketing person, if you're able to establish that, then you can now develop some strategy in a way that you can reduce the price of one of the products because the, the two products are strongly associated. So reduce the price or give discount to one price and raise the other, uh, uh, and raise the other, the price of the other. So the one that you reduce with a discount, people are motivated to buy that product and they will come in to buy it. And because they are associated to product B, they even though, even though product D price will go up, but the person may not think in that direction and he will still go for product D. So the company will not lose anything, even though they said they have given a discount to this, but they push it to the other. So this, you can use association rule mining, glean intelligence from the data and tell how uh you want to go by your discounting please those of you with numbers if you don't change your names i will take you out from the class i'm giving you five minutes to do that with your id change it to your your name okay in other words you can put your name and add the id if you want to do that all right so let me go to um our lecture slides then the next is the growth in cloud computing. Growth in cloud computing. Uh, so the same way, I'm going to also uh, put it to the class. Uh, what what is cloud computing? How is cloud computing changing businesses today? So please, if you have any idea about cloud computing, you can share in the class. All you need to do is just raise up your hand. I want the class to be interactive. And if you disagree on something, you can also bring it up. Yes. Uh, Romeo. Okay, sir. So my understanding on cloud computing is storage of an information that you can access over the internet. I mean, going yes, storage. back. Okay. Yeah, I think going Go back. Ahead. Yeah, going back, I mean, the traditional way of storing is I mean, getting server rack spaces and then keeping that information in-house. But with the invention of cloud, we have warehouses or we have storages in other regions where you can store it and then you can access it within the internet. Very good. Thank you very much, uh, Romeo. Uh, let me take Patrick. Okay, Doc. So cloud computing, as Romeo had earlier said, it has to do yes. with um, um storing the information over the internet and making it accessible wherever it is that you are. So if sure. we compare that to some earlier development, you realize that yeah. um, companies initially would have developed where once you are within their network and within a certain location, you can have access to the information. But Very with the good. development of cloud computing, it allows for you to practically have access to your information wherever it is that you find yourself in the world and still be able to work. Very good. Thank you, uh, Patrick. Uh, let me take uh, Ampem. Ampem. Okay. Uh, good morning, sir. Thank you, please. Uh, yes. 
So uh, please, uh, from what my colleague said, let me add to it. Uh, when we say yeah. cloud computing, cloud computing is basically you storing the information on servers as well. But though this one, these are not servers that you are taking care of. These are servers somewhere that you yourself, you don't even know where they are, but you have it. You have access to those servers on the internet. So you can access it like my, my colleague said, you can access it anytime you want it or anytime you need them at any place or anywhere that you are. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Yes, so all the explanations you have given, I've seen a lot of hands and I appreciate that. But you let me move on, a lot of questions will come up. Yes, so all what they have said is right, please. Cloud computing in simple terms and in lay perspective, is just making information, software, services on the internet for accessibility at anywhere and any time, at any time. And then there are a lot of components within the cloud space. We are not doing cloud computing, but it's just uh, a brief explanation. We are only looking at how it is transforming businesses. Okay, because we have different types of cloud space. We have the cloud as a service, cloud as infrastructure, and what have you. Now, uh, well, let me uh, explain it briefly why nowadays business prefer, businesses prefer to use the cloud infrastructure rather than the, the normal you know, server that we always have. Now, you see, in those times, when you have a, a dump terminal, a system like this, and then let's say, of course, the system comes with the server, what have you. If you ask a company to develop a software for you, let's say software A, what a company will do is that they will develop the software, then come into your system and install that software on your system. Meaning that the software will occupy space and use your system memory and then uh, the speed, everything. Then you install the software here and everything is sitting right here. So now in case you don't do any proper backup, or in case someone gets into your system, maybe comes to steal the whole system physically away, he has taken the software, the data and some other information away. But in the cloud, companies rather prefer that, okay, instead of having the software sitting on our server, our system here, let us go and host it somewhere in the data center in the space. So that all we need to do is to use a web address, a link or a domain number, a domain name to be able to assess the services. Now, many businesses are actually developing softwares and putting the softwares in the cloud. So in Ghana, a lot of businesses prefer to go for uh, services in the cloud, maybe human resource management system. And they will go, they will subscribe to that services and they pay every month. So in this case, when it comes to maintenance of the software, it is not the responsibility of your firm. It is the responsibility of the one who's providing the services. When there's a problem, they have to fix it. But if we get someone to develop the software for us, meaning that we need to maintain our own software and this one brings, uh, what do you call it? Also, uh, there's cost involved. I need to go and get technical people to be working in that firm. But when you have the services in the cloud, it is not your headache. So businesses prefer to go for cloud services. But the question is, the cloud services has security issues. As uh, I don't know whether Romeo or one of you said, it is hosted somewhere in the data center. So I can decide to develop a software and put it in the cloud and then make it available for accessibility for people to access and pay the services. But the question is, why I'm hosting it? Does your, comp your company, do they trust the source or where it is being hosted? Who is at the back end? Is it not pipelining your data for something else? So there's a lot into cloud computing. So the security aspect also scare people from going for it. Nevertheless, it's, it's very important and then many organizations prefer to go with the cloud infrastructure. And I can, I can tell you that, you know, uh, everyone, even in this class is using cloud speed. So cloud can be used as a service, as I just explained. And then uh, it has a storage component that they can also they sell the storage out. For instance, I have, but I think I have 200 
gigabyte of Google uh, Google Drive that I pay every month. I think it's one one some one fifty Ghana cities or so. And all my files and everything is in that cloud. So every year I pay this amount and my uh, this amount and my files are all there. So uh, sometimes when I'm traveling to Kumasi or anywhere, I have two machines. One of them I have I have Mac and also Windows laptop. But the Mac is very expensive. I bought it quite expensive than the Windows Mac the machine that I'm using. So I've decided to push all my files in that cloud. So now whenever I'm traveling, for the fear that somebody will steal or take my laptop, my MacBook away from me, I decided to go with my Windows laptop. If you take it away, no problem because it's not too expensive. So I take that one and I don't need to download any files from my Mac and put it on that machine because all my files are in the cloud. All I need to do is just take my laptop and go. If I go to Mars, anywhere at all I go, I go with the, 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 the machine. So when I'm there and I want to do anything, if I want to set questions, I want to do anything, all I need to do is just log into my cloud with the internet, assess my files, do whatever I want to do with it and save it back into the, into the cloud. Yeah, do, do your hand is up. Uh, yeah, sir, um, I'm not too sure what the data protection regime is like for Ghana, but uh, have you had any occasion where some company or business has run into issues with any regulator in Ghana because of data not, protection, their use of cloud computing? Yeah, not, not really. See, uh, in Ghana, when it comes to the, you mean, you, you mean as you link it to the cloud, right? Yes, yes. Hello? Yeah, so, uh, you know, many of the big organizations rather prefer uh, to go for the outsourcing other places where actual laws and other things works. In Ghana here, yes, we have the laws. We have the Data Protection Act, and now we have Cyber Security Act. They are there, but the implementation is somehow problematic. So for instance, how can decide to just uh, create a platform and put it in the cloud and make it accessible for people to access and pay using that services? Even though I'll host it somewhere, Maybe it can be the US data center or something. But I developed the system. So I can do, I can put a back door and do whatever I want to do because I developed the software and I'm in Ghana here. Now, that is if I want to do, imagine last week I told you that one company contacted us to look for data for them. Assuming that I have such services and those competitors are using the services. Before I develop it, I can find a way to get hold of or get some of their data and then push it to the company that is contracting me. But the issue is that the laws are there. So assuming that maybe there's an issue or there's a problem, what happens? So here, because uh, the enforcement is a bit weak and many people are able to do whatever they want to do. That is why many firms, many businesses uh, are having, having difficulty in assessing or outsourcing certain services from Ghana. Sometimes I keep saying that in Ghana, we have a very brilliant and good developers. I know some developers who are even Ghana here and they are working for firms in other countries and they are doing marvelously well, very nice developments and all that. But the issue is that when it comes to our firms or our companies using our services, then it's a problem. Sometimes it is not because they don't trust our competency, but also because of the security aspect of it. Uh, Joe, Joe, I don't know whether I've answered you. Uh, yes, in, in part, because my um, this cloud computing, most of the servers don't sit here in Ghana, they are elsewhere. So I'm wondering yes. if, because I think the regulator, let's say NCA will go like empty and you can't keep your core records on any cloud anywhere other than in Ghana. Yes. It needs to sit in Ghana. So that I was, I was, I was wondering if things of the sort exist. No, no, as you said, uh, in Ghana here, most we don't have, I don't know if there's even a, a what do you call it, a services, a data center providing services uh, in Ghana. But of course, there are, the rest of Ghana has a small data center. If you can, USA has their own data center, but they are just private data centers, but commercial data center. But you see, the, the explanation was that even though the, what the data center would do is that they just provide a space for us. So I develop the software, put it into that cloud. I can put a backdoor in that software 
I can manage from the back end because I developed the software and I'm making it available for people to assess it and pay for it. So what I'm trying to say is that as a technical person, I can always do whatever I want to do. The cloud or the data center is just to provide the space for me to do all this. But the issue is that, you know, uh, when the, even though, of course, even though when the, the cloud infrastructure also has uh, issues, people can also, you know, use the space to cause trouble. Uh, Bashiru. Please, about the data center issue, it's like Nita has that service. Uh, say it again. It's like Nita, Nita. Nita, okay. Is it, is it for commercial? commercial? Yes, yes. yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Good. Thank you very much. Now let's move on. Globalization opportunity. We have a lot to talk about today. So we can come back. Uh, globalization opportunity. We are talking about the role of information systems. Another thing is the opportunities in terms of globalization. Of course, when we talk about globalization, uh, someone will say that uh, uh, the, the world become as one. So whatever you do here can easily appear somewhere. And then uh, uh, internet has actually drastically reduced the cost of operating on global scale. So assuming that you have firms, a branch in Ghana, branch in uh, Togo, which is my dream country, you have a branch in Rwanda, you have a branch in, let's say, other African countries. Then you are the CEO here in Ghana. Uh, in those times, to be able to have a meeting, sometimes you may have to go to one country, invite everyone to come so that you can conduct your meeting. By this time, because of internet, at least, uh, or let's say information technology, we can have our meeting virtually. It is because of internet. That is why you and I are having lectures via Zoom. So, and also increase it in foreign trade and outsourcing. Foreign trade and outsourcing. Of course, you can link the outsourcing to the cloud computing. Because services can be put on the cloud space, uh, firms, anywhere can outsource the services. Uh, Microsoft has a lot of outsourcing. You know, they have a lot of platform that they have outsourced. And I think that our emails that we are using, and I think that our MIS system, they are all Microsoft products, which Invest of Ghana has outsourced. And a foreign trade, you know, trading because of the internet, and then because of, uh, uh, yes, because of the internet, you know, you can have some trade. Foreign trades like uh, this, what is the name? Ali, this uh, e-commerce platforms like Alibaba. And I know that many people here are able to purchase products from Alibaba in China. And then, and I understand some Ghanaians even buy food from uh, is it German or UK. Uh, there are some Ghanaians who don't live with us. They rather buy food from the UK and then they'll bring it to Ghana. And it is also as a result of this same globalization that globalization opportunities or the internet. Well, however, even though we have the opportunities, but it also presents some challenges. And I know that if I open the floor right now to tell about some of the challenges that internet or let's say the information technology has also presented. I'm sure that everyone in this class will get something to say. But I'm not going to open the floor for everyone to say something. But I want just about five people to talk about some of the challenges that uh, information systems, information technology, the internet is also, has also presented. So the floor is open. Please, you may want to contribute. Uh, if you want to even give a practical example, you are free to do that. Uh, Samuel. Samuel will see some of the challenges that information technology has also presented. Samuel. Okay, thank you very much, Doc. Um, so, for example, let's. I want to take the Facebook issue that came up, where they were, they were um, the outsourced company, which was Cambridge Analytica, using people's yes. um, information for other stuff. So those are those were challenges that, um, due to information technology, we um, we faced as individuals and also Facebook based as a company. Yes, Cambridge Analytica. So they find a way to lie to us and get our data and send it to organization. They were able to do whatever they want to do with it. 
Any other? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, let me call uh, Emmanuel. Emmanuel, do many support. Yes, so with with the introduction of um, cloud computing, you also need to train your staff because if um, it, it, an employee becomes reckless with your data, the whole data of the organization can be compromised. So if you're in a competition like Apple and Google are, or Samsung with the production of phones and all that, and then there is a data leak on the next model of your uh, phone you are going to release in the current year, it can go a long way to hurt the company. So security yeah. compromise. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Emmanuel. Uh, so I think that is also in order. Uh, let me call. Um, uh, is the same hands that are being raised? Can't I? Can't we have uh, new people also talking? Maybe I just have to pick it randomly. Uh, because yes, uh, we see the same Bashir, the same Romeo, the same Patrick, the same Alexander. I need new new hands, new hands. Uh, so let me just pick someone. Uh, where is Cl Clara B? Clara B. Uh, Clara, are you here? Okay, so there's the new hand. Uh, please, uh, this new hand called iPhone, you may have to re uh, rename yourself before. Please, can you rename yourself? So let me call Nana will say. Nana. Nana, you have the floor. If you are talking, it means you are muted. Can you unmute yes, yourself? Sir. And talk? Yes, sir. Sorry. Yes. With the challenges, I would say when the system breaks down, it causes customer dissatisfaction. Okay. Very good. Very good. Uh, let me call uh, Marvin. Marvin. Yes, the door. yes um, yeah. you can quickly get information or you can be in touch with your beloved ones because of uh, the internet service. Thank you. Very good. Let me call this uh, Kezia. Yeah. Kezia. Yeah, Kezia. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so with regards to the challenges of globalization, in my opinion, it has also created um, losing of job or difficulty in getting job because, um, because things have also scaled up more with internet and the use of um, information systems. Some um, activities that were done by human are now being replaced with computers. So there has been okay. no value of human workers. Yes, thank you very much, I see a lot of hands. That is good. Anyway, so usually I try to take about five people. So now let's move on. Uh, look at this diagram. This diagram goes to show, actually it's a, it's a research you know, conducted in the US. Unfortunately, uh, I couldn't find uh, the data in Africa specifically Ghana, but it is actually information uh, technology capital investment uh, in billions and also the number of years. Now, if you look at here, here, and then here, what this means is that from here to here is the total investment in firms or businesses in the US. So now between the two, <clears throat> If this level is, let's say, 100%, what it means is that with all the total investment in the US, 21% is invested in information technology in the year 1990, 9, 2000. The year 2000, 21% investment in information technology in all total investments. So meaning that other investments were uh, was uh, 79%. Okay. Now, as you can see, somehow it shoot up. And then in 2016, 2017, it went down. But of course, total investment also went down. So it is cascaded. It is cascaded. If, if you look at the effect, uh, the total investment went down. That is why it affected this. Now, so if you look at this, 33%, meaning that in 2017, if you look at 100% of total investment in the firms, 33% of it were invested in information technology. So this goes to show how relevant and important information technology 
has become in our businesses today. Obviously, you know, other sectors in the economy, other sectors in the world, uh, you may also uh, see the same uh, trend. I can even say that, you know, <clears throat> well, like I said, it was difficult getting data uh, from Africa, but this is in the US. And then uh, uh, we can say that 33% uh, invested in information technology. If you want to do some sort of uh, comparative analysis, or let's say to compare to Africa, even though I couldn't get the data, you realize that uh, Africa, when it comes to firms and businesses, now we are now actually automating, most of them are now automating the processes, uh, automating the processes. So from this year, uh, I think that the total investment in information technology will be very, very low when it comes to Africa. But somehow I believe that in Africa, it will shoot up a bit. It may not be... This goes to show that uh, information technology is very important in our businesses today. Businesses are highlighting the uh, potentials and then adding or creating uh, <clears throat> creating new business models as a result of what information technology. Now let's look at uh, when you see fully digitalized firm or economy. Let me let me relate this one to this in the US. I studied I studied in Finland actually. <clears throat> I had both my uh, two of my masters and also my PhD in Finland. Now, when it comes to uh, technology, Finland is one of the best in the world. And then their economy is almost, is fully, no, I wouldn't say fully, but it's the economy is more or less a digital economy. Anything at all, you can do it online. And it, the economy is more digitalized than UK, US, and major, I mean, countries, in the, because the, the country is it's a very small country. The population is just very small, I think 5.5, but the land size is bigger than Ghana. They have a lot of money. And then they invest so much in technology and they are one of the best when it comes to technology. And then, uh, but their problem is that they are not able to market themselves to the world. So people don't, they don't know them much. You know, Nokia is, is actually situated in Finland, it's from Finland. Now, if I want to compare this one to Finland, I would say that the investment in terms of information technology will be more than this 33% because the economy is, is actually almost a digital economy. Everything can be done online. Even right here, I still hold the permanent residence there and I go there almost every time. And I'm able to do all the requirements and things that I'm supposed to do from here via online. I don't need to be there. Even if you want to get married, you don't need to go there physically. You know, you can do everything online. You can fill from and do everything online. Everything can be done online. When it comes to banking transactions, everything. Now let's move on. Uh, so when you talk about the fully digital, uh, uh, fully digital firm, the firm that has, I mean, has its own processes digitalized. You know, <clears throat> there's always, uh, of course, I mean, uh, relationships. Okay, so significant business relationships are digitally enabled and gated. So when you talk about full digital firm or economy. We are talking about firm that has all its processes being digitalized. Uh, sometimes you go to the bank and then one or two people are just sitting there. And they are just there to handle people who are not able to use the, the, the what do you call it, uh, some of the tools. You know, there are still old people who are having challenges. In Finland, for you go to, you can enter into a bank and just about two or three people are sitting there as if there's no one in the bank because everything is done online. So, and the core business processes are accomplished through digital networks. So the processes are all network and everything is in place. Then key corporate assets are also managed uh, digitally. That is when we talk about a full digital firm or uh, a company. So digital firms offer greater flexibility in organizations and management. And I don't know whether Ghana, uh, our firms are gearing towards being fully digitalized. And when it is fully digitalized, it means that it comes uh, with cost to the economy. Uh, if I say cost, I mean, as somebody put it, you know, when we talk about the challenge, he, still, he spoke about job losses and all that. So for instance, if Ecobank decides to automate all its processes to the extent that you will need only one or two people 
in the bank and the rest are down online. The, a lot of people will lose their job. But I think that, you know, things are changing. Uh, information technology has come to stay. Many people are advancing. They are digitalized their, their systems. So at least you should also learn to use some of these tools, learn to navigate your way through technology. There are some people who I even give them the mobile app and then you, you try to even show them how to use it. They don't even want to express, they don't even have the interest in even doing it. But as it is now, you guys are in the business field, it has become a necessity. Even if you are born before computers, my advice is that try as much as possible to align yourself with it. You don't have to be practically inclined. There are other things you can learn. Normally, when I'm teaching POMIA students, I tell them that, yes, uh, information technology or IS is not all about programming. If you cannot program, doesn't mean that you are not in that space. There are other things you can do or you can become. You can be a project manager. You can even, uh, you know, you can be a scam master or whatever. I've seen two hands up. Let me pick those, those people and then we move on. Bashiru. Sir, sir. Bashiru, your hand is sir, up. I should, yes. have, I should have lowered it. So let me just do that. Okay. okay. So, but you see, as I'm, I'm, as I'm uh, talking, if you have question, contribution, anything you want to do, I'll give you the floor to go ahead and do it. All you need to do is to just raise up your hand. I just want the class to be interactive. That is all. And then uh, for me, I am the type that, you know, I try to encourage everyone to contribute. I also want to learn through the process. And then uh, we all move. Uh, do, do. Yes, yes. Are you no, feel so, free. I mean, feel free to interrupt. Yes. So, uh, one one thing I want to say is also with the with the coming of COVID, uh, it also expanded the use of IT tools a lot in in a lot Very of businesses. Good. Yes. Very good. Yes, you are right. Any other? Uh, so I'll take Juliet. Hello, sir. Thank you so much. So. Uh, with regards to you saying that at Finland, um, you go to the bank and only three people are there. I believe that in the Ghanaian society is the mentality as well, because a lot of companies have invested in the digit digitalization, but till now, people do not really partake in it. They have this perception yes. that... Juliet, yes. Yeah. Juliet, you are right. You are right. Sometimes it's also our, the, the level of education. Have you realized that in Ghana, there are a lot of Educated illiterate in Ghana. <laughs> uh, even other people who have completed SS, sometimes they behave as if they never went to school. So the level of education is also so an issue. You are right, Juliet. And the mentality, yes. Esther. Uh, Esther uh, thank you very much. Yes. Hi, thank you very much, sir. So I yes. just wanted to comment quickly on the fact that sometimes digitalization in our firms. Um, raise the concern of people losing their jobs. But at the end of the day, let's take um, something like the ATM machine as an example. Though the teller might lose their, their job, but it creates a whole other chain of employment for different right. skills. So in as much as um, in as much as we try to protect our jobs, let's also try to be agile, learn new skills so that we'll be able to keep up with the um, fast moving internet. Yes, very good. You learn new skills. Yes, exactly. So at least there are other things you can learn and fit yourself within the, the, digital, the, the digital space. So uh, let me take uh, Ani, uh, Anna. Anna. Yes, yes, sir. I also Anna. think, um, yes, sir. I also think people are afraid to change. Um, I work in the government sector where everything is done manually. You go and introduce something new, something to just take care of the data, and they are afraid to accept it. So I think it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's change. the change. People are not change. willing to accept change. change. I think one of our lectures is in lecture four. We shall look at, you know, some of the mediating factors that influence the implementation of information system. And like you said, change, that's culture, is one of the key factors. We shall look at this and how you can maneuver your way if you happen to be an IT person. So I will take, uh, uh, let me see who came, uh, Mr. Johnson. Mr. Johnson. 
Hola, Dili. I have a friend who right. is yes. the same for me. Oh, okay. Uh, I have, I have yes, a friend, so my country, a Nigerian friend who bears the same cell. Yeah, fully. But can I, can I... Yeah, go ahead, please. Johnson, I think you, your network Simple. is a bit problematic. Um, I yes. think that my contribution is simple. I, I think that fully relying on a digital economy or a, a digital regime is, for me, I think it's, it's, it's being dangerous. It's like putting all your eggs in one basket. I mean, a, a typical example was what happened to Facebook last year when, when they, uh, they had issues with their server and it was off and they lost a lot of money. So for me, I believe that uh, combining the two at every given time will be will be beneficial where certain core aspects of a business or of a company will be manual so that it will be kept from hacking and as you call it alteration i think a typical example will be in our universities where you know um, i mean growing, growing up i heard people were able to hack into university systems to change grades and so to combat this they had a, a how do you call it a paper copy of you know, to the student grace to tally with the how do you call it, with the digital copy. So that's just my contribution. Thank you. All right, uh, Johnson. Thank you very much. But you see, uh, many of businesses are actually implementing digitalization strategically. Uh, issues of uh, the 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 backing. Now let me tell you something. You see the websites. If I build a website for you right now and host it, that website, the data center, the data center, I'm going to host that website. It is not the only data center. They have a lot of backups. They can even have about five different backups. And the same applies to the firms. So if a firm uh, server breaks down right now, there is a backup elsewhere. So automatically, you know, the backup is restored and the company continues. So in every firm, we have what we call contingency plans. And the contingency plans includes what we call incidents response disaster recovery and the business continuity. So the business continuity team are responsible in making sure that the company continue its normal operations, despite the disaster or whatever will happen. So because this, this system is, uh, I don't know whether it's this lecture, but those who are, we do information security, uh, we do all those things, you know. So there's always a backup plan. When there's a disaster now, the company will be running the following day because you, you implement it strategically. Okay, I'll take, uh, uh, let me let me take, uh, who has been, Alex. Alex, your hand is up, Alex. Okay, so a bit that I also wanted to add uh, to the reason why people are reluctant to change to uh, the digital, infrastructure is, is the cost involved, especially government institutions. When they look at the cost involved to change the infrastructure, they tend to uh, go back to their old way of uh, comfortably doing things in the manual manner. That is also one of the, one of the reasons. Yeah, but uh, you come to realize after the whole, this whole course, you come to realize that it is cheaper to go digitalization than with the manual way. And then I would, rather, I would rather link it to corruption. People prefer to still do the manual because it's easy to corrupt within that space, to create a lot of corruption. Uh, it is very difficult to take envelope behind uh, or under a table when, when we have a digitalization. So some people try to sabotage it. But I can assure you that digitalization is even cheaper. Anyway, let's move on you understand more so now because with you know when you have the space sometimes you know with the it space you go with the manual there are a lot of people you employ to handle certain things but with digitalization you reduce the, the organizational chart the layer the levels may be reduced as a result of it okay you let's move on of course i've seen a lot of hands i'll come back later to it now let's we are still talking about the role of information systems in business today uh, one other thing is uh, interdependent. Uh, here, let me do a little bit of uh, planning here. You see, in every firm or business organization, uh, there's planning, you plan. And the planning 
is in three different levels. We have what we call strategic plan. We have the tactical plan and then we have the operational plan. Okay, now at the strategic plan, it is done at the top and it is based on this strategic plan that other the next level or the middle level will develop a tactical plan and then of course you have the operational plan usually the tactical plan is short term and then the strategic plan is long term in your strategic plan you need to define we have certain components you need to define your vision you need to define your mission and you need to have your core values now the mission and the vision uh, is what you are going to base on to develop the tactical plan, your, your objectives, your pillars, your priorities, and all that. So for instance, a vision of a company can be like, your company wants to be number one, best in Africa, or best in Ghana, uh, with the aid of digital space, or with the aid of digitalization, you want to be number one. Okay, so now many organizations when you are developing their plan or strategic plan, at the top, they try to include digitalization information technology. Because nowadays, it is very difficult to achieve your organizational goal without digitalization. Some even capture that in their vision. Others will not capture in their vision, but with the pillars or the strategic you know, objectives, they will indicate them, them as part of the strategic plan. Now, all I'm saying here is that the, the strategic plan, the corporate strategies, and the goals that you set, it has a link to the information technology. There's interdependence between the two. Meaning that uh, your plan, if you are developing or structuring your corporate strategies and goals, you must consider information technology, the kind of information technology you want to go for. So if you make changes to your strategy, you must also consider revising your information technology strategy. Or if you make changes to the kind of technology you want to bring in, your business model and all that, you must also reflect and make changes to your strategies and goals. So changes in strategy, rules, business processes increasingly require change in the hardware, the software, database, and telecommunication. Let me give practical example. Let's assume that at the moment, your company is only operating in Accra. And your strategy, your vision is that you want to be number one, let's say security firm in Accra. Now, because you want to be number one security firm in Accra, which is your vision, you decided to take a very small database we call access, access database for your system. Now, because the population in Accra is very small as compared to the whole of Ghana, Later on, when you change your vision and say that you want to be number one data security firm in the whole of Ghana, meaning that your strategy has changed. You need to go back and look at your infrastructure, data infrastructure and the technology you are using, whether you should make changes to it or not. So if you want to do the whole of Ghana, then you don't go with access or let's see Microsoft Excel. Rather, you expand it. Of course, you can go with SQL, MySQL or SQL a database, because this is bigger and broader than the access or even using Excel. So this is a practical explanation. Another one too has to do, of course, you can even use the hardware infrastructure. Maybe the server space you have gone for is just one terabyte. But because your vision has changed, now you want to be the best in the world, meaning that you are going to expand your customer base. So in this case, instead of one terabyte, you may have to expand it. So in effect, all I'm saying is that there is interdependence between your strategy and then information system or the information technology infrastructure. And it is bi-directional. So when you make changes to this, you must also reflect on the infrastructure. And then the same also applies to that. Mostly the changes are done here, but sometimes, you know, this one may trigger for you to make changes at the business strategies as well. So there's a clear interdependence between your strategy and the business. So in those times, yes, you can just decide to come out with the, the strategic plan, develop your tactical plan. The tactical plan is more or less a condensed form of strategic plan, which is at the top. Tactically, the next levels, IT department, finance, they all develop their own tactical plan. 
and of course you have the operational level. Uh, let me see. Uh, there's a hand up. Uh, Benedictus. Benedictus. Oh, sir. Good. Do you want to add something? Yeah. yeah. So uh, I just want to ask uh, the changes that happen to the uh, uh, information okay. system. She, is it always yes. that it has to be as a result of a change in a strategic plan of the company? So uh, I'm coming from this example, maybe just because of the, uh, maybe a, a company starting from scratch who decide to use Excel sheet to uh, store its data yes. as a result of organic growth, yes. uh, the data points increases, the roles have to increase and everything, and they decide to migrate to maybe a web-based database. Uh, would, would, are you going to attribute that to a change in strategic plan or just a natural growth of their company? Well, it is not always, uh, you know, but it's not always, but you know, it depends on your vision and what you want to become. Uh, sometimes you may make changes in your strategy and it will not affect your information systems. You can make changes in the strategy to not affect the information systems. Then in, but of course, what I'm trying to say is that usually you need to ask us both and see, they, they depend on each other and see whether, you know, there is something, if you change the strategy, there is something you need to do at the information system aspect in order to promote or help you achieve the vision. Well, some people, of course, there can be changes in the strategy, but the changes that you make at the infrastructure aspect may be negligible, that it may not have any uh, significant impact. So you leave it, and of course, as time goes on. And usually with a, with a strategic plan, we develop it long-term, short-term. You can have a long-term strategic plan. Sometimes, sometimes you can even develop 10 years. Uh, it can be five years, you know, but every, when the plan, when the ends, you need to assess. And in your strategic plan, you come up with strategic objectives. And objectives you allocate or you attach KPIs, key performance indicators. So at the end of the day, you look at the indicators, you collect it, that to ensure to make to, to check whether you've been able to achieve that within that time frame. Otherwise, you revise it, you develop a strategy, and also consider infrastructure. But they're interdependent, there's not only. Uh, Juliet. Juliet. Yeah, hello, sir. Yes. I think it's an old hand, please. Okay, it's an old hand. So yes, in that case, if you raise up your hand and you finish talking, you just put it down. Uh, so let me call on, uh, what do you call it? Uh, William. William. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, William, it seems you are not going to be a problem. I need to be continuing. Uh, uh, William, uh, I think I cannot hear William. Can someone hear him? No, please. We can't hear him. Hello, no, please. I, I think it's my little Okay, so let's move on. I, mean, I, I think William is having a problem with the network. So let's move on. So now, on this screen right now, uh, generally, generally, Organization aims to achieve, every firm aims to achieve the following uh, strategic uh, business objectives. Uh, business firms invest heavily in information system to achieve six strategic business objectives. So the first one is the operational excellence. Then another objective is also to get new products, services, and business models then customer and supply intimacy. The fourth one is improved decision-making. They have a competitive advantage and also survival. Now we take them one after the other. When we talk about operational excellence, what does it mean? Why do firms uh, implement information systems? And then to do that, these are some of the objectives that motivates the implementation of information systems. So the first one is operational excellence. So operational excellence, of course, has to do with the improvement of efficiency to attain higher profitability. In effect, every firm aims at making profit, uh, unless, of course, it's, it's non-profit uh, organization. But every organization aims at uh, making a, a profit-making organization aims at making profit. 
Now, when you improve the efficiency at operational level, yes, the expectation is that you achieve higher profitability. Uh, and I know that if I open up the floor, you can give more examples. Uh, one, one way or one example is even the mobile apps. And I know many of you are working in a bank where now we are able to use banking apps. So banking apps were introduced in a way to also promote or improve the operational efficiency. So in those times where I have to come and queue in the bank just to cash 100 Ghana cities, if it, to cash 100 Ghana cities, now because of mobile apps, you don't have to do that. Every Momo, now you can even transfer money from your account to your Momo account and from Momo to your account. So these are ways to, to, to improve operational efficiency and that is operational excellence. Now we can also look at information system technology are important tools in achieving greater efficient product. Of course, I've explained that. Now look at another example is food order app. People order food with the app. It's easy and efficient for both the customer and also the firm. Then we have the internet and mobile banking apps. I've explained that. And now we have one uh, is it e-commerce site called Jumia. And Jumia, they are most they are almost into everything. So you can buy things and all that. So these are all at operational excellence level. Now, the next level is new products. Now, firms are also innovating because even though the mobile app is there, but as time goes on, they have their innovation sector or department that are always reviewing their system to ensure that uh, they can either improve the system or they'll bring out a new product. Uh, it may not necessarily be the banking sector or those sectors. There can be information technology firm, IT firm. So the firm can come out with an app or uh, a keystone app that would generate resources, generate money or revenue for the, for the company. So it's a new product. So you are coming up with a new product and also services. And one other thing is also the business model. Business model. Okay, let's say that we, we are we sell with. And then what we do is that I put the wig in, in the shop. People come to the shop manually to buy the wigs and go. Or people use a mobile phone to call us, make the order that we give it to Okada, and Okada will go and deliver. So if you look at it, the person will use his mobile phone to call. He will spend some credit to make that call. Then at the end of the day, you receive the call. Sometimes there can even be inconvenience in terms of the call uh, transactions and all that. Now you realize that the model for which you are adapting is not too good. You analyze it and see that there are some issues with it. So instead, you want to go to an IT person, a software developer, to get you a software that can facilitate and make this one easier. So they can be changed in a model. Sometimes the model may be purely manual. So once you get a software where the person can easily look at your product on the internet or using the mobile app, check it, look at the conditions, the price and everything, he can just make a purchase there. You take the order and then deliver the order through Okada or whatever means to the person, meaning that the whole model has changed. So, uh, of course, business model describe how company produces, delivers and sell products or services to create wealth. Information systems and technology is a major enabling tool for new products, services, and then uh, business models. And then an the example is Uber. When Uber started, it was, you take your mobile phone, you call the, the taxi company, they give them your address, they'll come there and pick you. But later on, they decided to create a platform where uh, the platform is embedded with uh, location-based, you know, uh, uh, location-based software, so that you can just order the car as the car Uber is coming. You're able to monitor the movement of the car. When it gets to your location, of course, you know that the car has arrived. You take it, and it takes you to your destination. So this is a whole uh, new product, or let's say a product, sorry, Uber was a new product at the time, by a model. Then both came as a competitor, and also, of course, now we have Netflix. 
where instead of you to go to cinemas and others, well, people still prefer to go to cinema for some reason. Maybe uh, uh, Alice, Alice may want to tell us why she has been going to cinema instead of watching movie in, in, uh, on Netflix in, in her, her own house. Alice, Alice, do you want to tell us why? Alice Adakwa. Okay, Kingsley want to tell us why. Kingsley. Oh, hey. So please, the cinema yeah. gives you a different kind of experience in terms of the sound, the large screen view and all that. You know, this, the, the Netflix is just like watching on your laptop or probably your phone or um, the TV where the sound is of no difference and other times. And other times too, it's about hanging out with friends. You know, the cinema gives you a kind of opportunity to make new friends or see okay, someone. you are not talking. <laughs> you, are, you are not talking. <laughs> so, yes, you are not talking. Go, going out or going to cinema. Okay, maybe AJ, AJ want to add more. AJ, Kevin. So, please, not every movie is available on Netflix. That's also another part. Another, yes. Uh, Mr. Johnson. Mine was totally different. I don't know if I can say it. Um, uh, okay, uh, Mr. Okay, was, go ahead, Mr. I, Johnson. I wanted to say the same with the betting co companies. As again, people going to the betting places. I mean, okay. some people going to the betting offices to go and bet. Some can bet conveniently from their homes. Okay, Mr. Johnson, it looks like you are a bit far away from your phone. Uh, your voice is, is somehow low, so you may have to check it. Uh, I saw this lady, she went off, uh, she put her hand, hand down. Uh, I don't remember the name again. I wanted a lady to also react. But anyway, let's move on. Okay, Rob Roberta, she's here. Roberta, take the floor, unmute yourself, and then talk. I was I was going to contribute to the going to the cinemas instead of being alone. Yes, go, where I yes, go ahead. At times, it's also different maybe with people's reactions to certain scenes and all that. You actually feel like to be a part of it, to actually have a feel of what, how people react to certain things. That's how come me personally, I would love to go there, even though we have Netflix and all that at, at the moment. Okay, very good. Yeah, so you see, uh, Netflix is there and people, uh, it has actually been established that it's difficult for you to go out that physical, you know, appearance. So now what people now do is that, okay, let's create a new model. Uh, now people don't want, a lot of people prefer going to cinemas. So the model is that uh, to book, to go there and just make the physical booking. Okay, let's develop an app where you can just select the movie you want to watch or whatever, and then make your bookings and pay everything online. Now let's look at the third, a uh, strategic objective, which is customer and supplier intimacy. To me, this is one of the most important objectives when it comes to IS implementation. Now, if you look at the this image, these two images, you realize that one of them, there are the same people, but the top one, there's a problem. They are not happy. And then the down one, both of them are happy. So here, every customer wants to be happy. Uh, a customer who is not happy is a very dangerous customer. That customer can collapse your business. So you need to find a way to make the customer happy. For instance, if let's say I'm using an app, a banking app, and this banking app, uh, the data there is my data, my transaction and everything, I'm entitled to it. And any time I want to assess my data, I should be able to assess it. If I want to make any transfers, I should be able to make that transfer. But at some point, you want to make the transfer, it doesn't go through, there's a problem. You see that you become frustrated. And if it happens like that consistently, or let's say the, the issue comes up for some time, you become quite frustrated and you may be tempted to leave even the firm or the company or the firm that is providing the services to you. So serving customers will leads to customer retaining. 
So if you serve them well, they will return. They will always be with you. And it raises revenue. Unless, of course, uh, there are other things that you know other firms have uh, added to their services that you have not, and you prefer that services, and the person may leave. Even with that, you can have a strategy to keep the customer happy at all times. There are some people, even when you call them on phone to table your problem, your issues with your app or their, their, their services, the response alone can we take you out from, the, from, from that particular firm. So, and the intimacy with suppliers allows them to provide vital inputs, which lowers cost. So once you also create that sense of intimacy with your suppliers, it also provides some kind of uh, inputs also from the suppliers. And of course, you know, it can also lower cost, especially when information technology is introduced. Because there are certain services that you can use the online platform to do with your suppliers. So you realize that the model with the online, especially the supply chain processes and all that, is it's far better and lowest cost than when you have to go with a manual way. So when you do that, you actually create some sort of intimacy and make your customers happy. Sometimes it's not about speaking with them nicely, but it's also about introducing software that will make their work easier and faster. So in this case, they are always happy and they want to be with you. All right. Any contribution here? Anyone, if you want to contribute here, you can raise up your hand and also make a contribution. Some of you may want to share, uh, you know, some of you, some of uh, how you guys have been uh, doing to also increase the level of intimacy. Juliet. I'm um, saying, so can you say that with re regards to customer and supplier intimacy, when it comes to the app, um, simplicity of the app will also give much intimacy because if a customer logs into the app and it's much complicated, they wouldn't have much interest in using the app. So can we also use that as an example? Um, yes, yeah, it's a very, it's a typical example, yes. So that is why in IT, we have something we call user experience. So you need to pay critical attention to the usability aspect of it. Yes, it's, it's, it's very important. Roberta. Um, yeah, I was also going to talk about how complex it is. Some are not really user friendly. And at times also with some of the telcos, um, you know, now because you are not able to, because of the COVID, um, we're running a shift system. So some people are in there and with their customer service centers. So um, they reduce the numbers. I don't really know how it works, but so they've in, they, like they've now introduced um, sort of, um, maybe a, like, um, sorry, so you speak to um, this robotics through WhatsApp and then through text messages, other e-channels yeah, that you can use. Exactly. Yeah, but just Chambo. that some of them at certain times, um, their responses are slow. So with regards to what you need to be done, at times it doesn't really help the customer and it doesn't leave the customer satisfied because at time, there are times that you'd want a situation resolved there and then. And then if you had had a chance speak to a customer service agent, you'd have had a result for you. But if you leave your comments and staffs on their WhatsApp and their text and other channels, it takes a while for them to be resolved and it doesn't really satisfy the customer as they would have liked. Very good, Roberta. Benjamin, Ben Ankara. Uh, yes, sir. Um, yeah. Yeah. My contribution about the customer and supplier is to compare to where I worked, uh, that is NHI. Initially, customers wake, wakes up early morning, go to the offices, queue, and other things. But with the introduction of uh, ICT, uh, they sit at their homes and renew their cars, or they can go to any uh, district offices to renew their card or do any card when it is Very good. So this is my thing. Very good. So now, yes, thank you. So now we can all establish that information systems play a key role when it comes to customer and supply intimacy. Every customer wants to be happy. Right now, if I'm here 
then I can do everything online, traverse and do everything easily without any challenges, no problem. You know, I'm happy and I want to stay. But if I have to be with the service where, even if I want to draw Ghana, 100 Ghana streets, I have to walk to the place and do it. That is not motivating enough. Jojo, Jojo will be the last person to yes. and the customer supplying to me, they move on. Jojo. Yeah, yes, sir. So for some businesses, actually, they, they would re rely or require, they actually would prefer cost physical interaction with their customers than to have them online. If you have a business that has um, shops that sell items, right, they could put it online and get customers buy and then have it delivered to wherever they are. But certain businesses yeah. think that if the customer enters the, the building, they may want to buy one yeah. item, but they may see another item and want to buy as well and pick that up. And so they rather prefer yeah. to have physical interactions than to put their businesses online. So yeah, I think it depends on the business, okay. but by and large, most businesses actually prefer still having um, their customer intimacies via uh, right. the apps. Okay, good. Thank you very much, Jojo, you're right. Now let's look at the next strategic objectives. Improved decision-making. So this is where the big data that we mentioned earlier will come. So, uh, you know, without information systems, managers sometimes use their own intuition to forecast, make guesses, and then predict the future. And usually it is a bit difficult to make that decision. And if you do that, sometimes you end up giving a, you know, projecting poorly, of course, that results the poor response time. Then to predict allocation of resources. You see the association rules mining that I said, for instance, you can use the association rules mining to predict that uh, in a in Kumasi, Kumasi office or Kumasi branch, resources, or let's see, fridges are likely to finish by, to this time. So let us quickly send fridges there. And then you can use the existing data to predict how resources can be allocated to your firm if you have branches in other places. So uh, managers, of course, use their own intuition to do that. But information technology, why we have this big data? Data has a lot of intelligence in it that can help us to rather make predictions, which is better and make certain guesses than when you want to do it in a manual way. So if you're able to glean or explore intelligence from the data, it helps the organization to make informed decisions. An example is uh, as a data scientist in the firm, let's say a bank, for instance, you can get existing data, which we call historical data, and then use that historical data to predict whether a particular customer who has come to uh, solicit or look for a loan, whether the customer will pay the loan back or not. So you can use existing data to make prediction whether the loan should be given to the person or not. So existing data helps a lot to forecast and help the organization to, to plan well. I can also explore, develop a model, a predictive model to tell that this particular firm is likely to lose uh, it's likely to lose some, some money or they'll make losses within the next three months, they'll make losses. Within the next five months, they'll make profits. So if I'm able to, pre able to predict based on the data, existing data, that this firm is likely to make losses maybe in three months time, then the company can now look at it and then uh, maybe intensify their campaign or whatever in order not to lose revenue at that time. So there's a lot you can make uh, from data, what we call the business analytics tool. You can use business analytics tool to help managers to monitor also the progress of your companies and prompt on routine decisions. So you can create some sort of visualization that can give you real time display of what your organization is doing, the performance and everything. And you usually make a decision from there. So uh, that is why, I don't know whether it's in this class I said, we are introducing a new master's degree program called MSc in Business Analytics. 
and it will be mounted this year. We are hoping to advertise it this year at a mount. It's just one year program. So the program is more focused on data, data, this big data, and how can you leverage on uh, tools like deep learning, machine learning, and of course, you have the visualization tools to, to explore this big data in order to help organization make informed uh, decision. So at this stage, it's an decision that is based on data. And sometimes at the MIS level, you're able to generate a report, daily reports. After the teller has finished all her works, at the end of the day, the system allows you to generate a report and look at how much you have been able to generate within that day. And of course, you can develop some sort of analytical tools that can help you uh, predict you know, with previous years to see whether you are doing well or not. So information systems is vital and help us to make uh, cheat sheets. Any question, any contribution in respect of this? Maybe somebody may want to share a practical experience in respect of uh, decision making. Uh, let me, Gideon. Gideon. Yes, so yes. there was uh, this customer. Yes, well, so there was this customer that deals in buying items from um, um, an international supplier. And yes. what the supplier was doing was um, yes. the supplier was charging them for freight within the um, the the cost from from factory, and then they were also paying additional freight to here. Now, before they were using access, and then they switched to a, a, a system that sits on SQL. What did what it actually okay, did for okay. them was to okay. yes, please. What they actually did for them was to be able to identify that this is what their supplier was doing. And it, it, it even made their supplier invite them over for an apology and then dash them iPhones. Um, sorry, sorry I have tablets, yeah. Yeah, so I wanted to also Good. add that what it also does in terms of improved decision-making is it also helps you to grow your customers. Um, obviously, okay. if you have, um, uh, let's say the manufacturing industry where um, you, you, you sell to your bulk, um, customers or your bulk distributors, uh, you are able to get a forecast, which helps you to know that, oh, this, this is the performance of the particular bulk distributor. And you can grow them in terms of when they fall, in terms of uh, sales, or um, they are not meeting up their monthly or weekly target as well. For all you may know, it, okay. it might be that they started also bringing on board other um other products, which is making their floor space, um, have less space on their floor, which is affecting you as well. So it helps to also grow your, not only the business in terms of decision-making, but also okay. to um, grow okay. your customers as well. Thank you very much. Let me call Mavis, Jiwa. Mavis, okay. or Mavis. Yes, yes. yes. Mavis Jiwa. Okay, so a practical example will be that in the corporate environment where we have ticketing softwares and then the users key in their incidents, at the end of the month or the week, you, the service desk manager or anybody in charge can pull out incidents that happened or reports from the end of the month. And then you can decide that, okay, this month we had a lot of users complaining about their Dell laptops. So going forward as a business, maybe we should look at buying um, maybe Lenovo laptops or something. Very good. I see a lot of practical explanations coming up. So I will take uh, 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 Judith. Judith. Yes, yes, thank you. So another example, practical example I'll give is um, for the telecommunications, when um, um, advertising their products to customers, so the messages that you, uh, customers receive on the products um, available on the network. So with this, um, with analytical tools, companies are able to, uh, or the telecommunication companies are able to tell which customers are um, like um, buying into these products or which customers would leave the network very soon, maybe in three months time, 
or in six months time, this, this uh, particular number of customers will be leaving. So they target the, the particular customers that they project that will be leaving and then push a certain promotional products to them. So it won't be the normal ones that um, people receive, but this one will be such that it will be able to pull the customers back and then they will not stop using their SIM cards or um, the numbers that they are using. So that's another practical. Thank you very much. Good. So let me pick uh, Franklina. Yes, sir. So um, in the pharmaceutical side for pharmacies, there are softwares that will allow you to know your fast moving drugs and the slow moving drugs. So if you know aphrodisiacs move Good. faster, you stock more your aphrodisiacs and reduce your supplements so you make your money. Good. Yes. Very good. Good. And then, uh, okay, so let me pick uh, one last person. Uh, this time, let me pick, uh, let me pick Gerald. Uh, Gerald, Patrick Gerald, I think you've, you've been on for a long time. Gerald. Okay, thank you, Doc. Um, one thing about the information system is that sometimes we, we don't even know the extent to which um, the information or the data around us could be useful to us. So when you have the information system in place and you are able to pick the data, it is at that point that you realize you can make a lot of, um, extract a lot of reports and interrelated relationships from that one to Very help good. with the decisions that you make. Very good. Very good. So now let's move on to the next uh, objective. Yes, of course, uh, competitive advantage. So information systems help us to be able to stay competitively, to compete well within the business ecosystem. So of course, you know, if you, uh, it helps you to deliver better performance, uh, all things being equal actually, charging less for superior products. Yes, so uh, sometimes with IT or information systems, uh, you are able to charge less. Uh, I think that not this lecture, one of the lectures uh, we, uh, we were, I was explained, it has to do with a strategy why product, the price of a product to go less because of information systems. Because when you have uh, uh, organizational charts, when the chart has a lot of layers, information system can collapse some of the layers. Once you collapse the layers, the money that you pay to people who are working within these layers, those monies can be channeled into the product or the services. That can help reduce the price so that you can get a lot of people on board. So uh, we'll talk more about it. Then uh, responding to customers and suppliers in real time. You all know that, okay, in real time, of course, like uh, you make a call uh, to, to, what do you call it? Uh, uh, maybe a bank, you have an issue. Then as soon as the call is through, they will receive it, get to you, address your issue, issues and all that. Sometimes you even call, the person will pick the phone and tell you that he has to uh, call another office and then hold up and you have to stay on and pay a lot of, a lot of money. So organizations may also have, they may, may, they may have to find ways to improve this aspect. Frankly speaking, one of the challenges, one of the problems I'm having when it comes to uh, this part, responding to customers and suppliers in real time with information technology to me is, is, is a very big problem where many organizations are not doing well, even in Europe. Uh, recently, I, I was in France and I bought, I bought uh, what do you call it? I said, I did uh, this COVID, COVID test. And this COVID test, when I went there, they told me that uh, if I want a receipt, they have something they call certificates. And that certificate will cost me additional 40 euro but if I don't need that certificate, then it will cost me 198 euros. When I was coming to Ghana, when I was going to, I was moving from that there to Amsterdam, so I needed to do test. They say one, one, 198 euros, okay. So I, I told them that I don't need a certificate. All I need is that they should just send me an email uh, with the results and I can use that to go. And I said, okay, so that was the agreement. Then I paid this 198, then I, I thought everything is off. Quite recently, I was here and they sent me a bill of 40 euros. And I said, how? We had a conversation and the agreement was that I only pay for 198. Now they're asking me to pay this and they are giving reasons that because of the certificate, they never gave me certificate. So my problem was that 
uh, I sent, sorry, I sent them an email expressing my anger why they did that. They didn't reply me. So I had to now call them on phone. My sister, I spent almost 150 Ghana cities. Because when I make the call, <laughs> uh, it will put me on a, is it switchboard or something? Then I'll be on for a very long time. No one is taking. Now later, another person picked and I tried to explain myself. When I finished, he said, no, he cannot handle it. He has to transfer the call to another person. And I was still on. Yeah, this other person, the call when the person too was not receiving. I don't know whether they, they, know, they know that I was going to complain about that. I'm telling you till now, my call never went through. And I spent a huge amount of money calling. So I think that it's, 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 a, it's a problem, even though such economies have uh, digitalized. But you know, when it comes to call in, sometimes it's a problem. But other times to, you know, where it is more efficient and effective, whenever you go there or you call them, even the way the person will respond to you as if the person is even interested in you because they get time and explain issues to you. Uh, and so I think that, you know, for some reason in Ghana here or let me elsewhere, responding to customers and supplies with their time is, is a problem. And then uh, I, let me open up the floor. Maybe some of you may want to share your perspective. And I know that some of you are working uh, in a, as a customer service managers and all that. You may want to tell us why some of these things are a bit problematic, you know, in responding to uh, customers in real time. Uh, Marvin. In some of, yes, yeah, Doc, I'm here. Yes. Yes. Uh, I think some of the reasons that you see some of uh, some of the us who are below the uh, how do you call it organizational structure sometimes it's difficult for us to make decisions. So that is why most of them, most of us, uh, find it difficult to uh, respond to some of these problems. Yes. And also maybe when there's a big issue, you always people about whoever address it. So sometimes we are we are free to take responsibilities or help customers accordingly because we, because of the consequences. And some organizations will, 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 will always not stand by their staff. We still be doing people just do mistakes. We just uh, at least uh, uh, single you out for whatever query or the consequence of what you have. That is why it's very difficult for in terms of customer service for people to just come out and help help people. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh... Marvin, any other? Uh, okay, so Stella, Stella has no spoken. So Stella. Um, uh, I, I work at the banking sector and yes. I'm at the branch. So sometimes Very when good. a customer comes with a complaint and it's supposed to be addressed immediately because of the protocol, it has to be sent to the head office and they also have a process. It takes longer than anticipated. And most of the time, the customers do not understand that it's not our fault that we are delaying because we send the mail, but then they also have steps, authorizations, and other things that have to go through. So that's probably one of the main reasons why. Yeah, so thank you very much. So let me let me take uh, uh, Della. Della, or mute yourself. Yes. Hi, Doug. Okay. Um, yes. Service delivery actually in Ghana is undermined. I work, I'm a customer service consultant. Good. And um, interacting with clients is it's a real deal, if I'll put it that way, because you have diverse people that you are interacting with. You need mm -hmm. to listen to the peculiarity of their issue and yeah. then um, switch to, to suit them and um, attend to whatever their needs are. If we don't have a readily available um, solution to them, you just need to give them the assurance that you are working on a first time response, gives them a consolation that they are being heard and their issue is being um, worked on or Very good. They, they certainly will hear from you or you. And then when you promise them a feedback, you need to be very time yes. conscious about that. That builds a lot of trust and confidence in the clients. Very good, very good. So you agree, you agree, uh, you agree with me that uh, if you're able to have no effective response time to customers and suppliers, uh, it, 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 
actually increase uh, customer motivation and intimacy. And in effect, once the customer is happy, you become, your firm becomes competitive within the space. Exactly, okay. Doc. That's one of the reasons why I'm actually studying MIS, because I need the right technologies to be able to serve my customers better. So that's one of the reasons. Oh, Okay, are you doing MIS or yes, are you MIS. doing MIS yes. or you are doing MIS? Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, all right, that's fine. All right, let's move on. So uh, now the last strategic objective is survival. You know, I've always been thinking this. <laughs> survival is very important. A many organization without information technology, it is very hard to survive. It's very hard. Of course, well, champion. Challenge. No meat. Okay, good. I'm gonna you. Kevin. Let me meet. Let me meet him. Okay, I'm not able to meet you anyway. Let's move on. Okay. All right. So now, survivor. So information technologies as a necessity of business, industry level, you know, uh, governmental regulations require record. Anyway, but the whole thing about this is that you need uh, information technology tools or IAs to be able to survive. And businesses uh, cannot easily uh, survive without implementation of information technology. You can take two firms, you know, working together. Maybe, okay, both are banks, you know, this bank introduced, you know, when ATM came. So let's assume that this bank had ATM in the, I think 20 years ago. And that this bank had no ATM where you can withdraw money. You have to go there and do fiscal withdrawal. So you realize that uh, it's very difficult for this one to stay within this. It's very, very difficult. So you need the IT to be able to stay in. And then I know that nowadays, many of the, uh, the ladies are doing a wake selling and all that. So if you want to do it and still be manual, I expect the customer to come to you and pick it up and buy it. Sometimes it's difficult to keep up and then it's difficult for you to stay in. So information technology is actually a foundation for business survival. Now let's look at approaches to contemporary approach to information systems. I told you that we have the technical approach and then the behavioral approach. Usually the technical one emphasizes on mathematical modeling, base models. So computer science, management science, and operations research, they have a way of teaching information systems. Then we have the behavioral approach, usually in the psychology, economy, sociology, and the behavioral areas. And then business, like here in the business school. If I am teaching this MIS in the computer science department, the approach would have been different. Uh, many of these management aspects wouldn't have come in. And then it also involves some sort of mathematical modeling rather than just you know, looking at it from the management point of view. So uh, these are the disciplines. We have the management science, computer science operations. Then we have the sociology, economics, psychology, yeah, business, accounting, finance, and all that are part of the behavioral way of handling information systems. And that's what we are doing. But if it is this part, you, know, you have to do some sort of mathematical modeling uh, for instance, decision making in information systems, uh, in management science, you have to write up, you have to draw some sort of optimization techniques, uh, you know, and then, uh, and I know you are doing management science this semester, and mostly students don't like lecturers taking the management science, because they feel like it's a difficult course area, but it's not the mathematics, the mathematics, okay. Now, the socio-technical view of information system. Actually, information system is a socio-technical view, or it's a socio-technical system. The socio is the people and the policy. If you remember the definition, the people plus the policy is a social part, and the technical part is where you have the information technology itself. So it's the term usually given to any instantiation of social and technical elements engaged in good directed behavior. So usually, the social aspect, which is the, the strategy, the people, the procedure, the policies and all that. I said earlier that whenever you, you, you design, you have your strategy, you make sure that you have to adjust it so that it will be in line with your technology. So that is obviously a social technical system. If you look at this diagram, 
you have certain options, alternatives. You have alternative one in technology, but you need to consider the organization, consider the organization, consider the strategy, consider the policies in place, consider any other, other people even working in there. You know, do, they, do you have the competency to handle the technology that you want to go for? So you have to make sure you adjust and make sure they are all in line. If you take the next alternative, the same way, until you reach a final decision, meaning that the decision to go for or to develop a technology tool for your firm must be based on the organization. And of course, the strategy, just like what I said earlier. So you must make sure that whatever alternatives you have, you are just in line with the IT. That is where you can have a survivor within the system. So this is social technical. So consider both the social part and the technical part. If you are only interested in the technical part, the, sorry, the technical part, meaning that you go and do information technology or you do computer science, CS or information technology. But if you are interested in the, this part, the social part too, then uh, information systems is the ideal or you, you can go for information technology uh, management. Okay, so that is why, because of the social technical view of information systems, that is why information systems are run in the business school, so that the management aspect also come in. Of course, you can, we also have information systems in computer science and other departments. So if you go to GIMPA, it is in the faculty of technology. The year we try as much as possible to infuse the management part of it. So we have the bit of the technical and also the social aspects. So the disciplinary on computing allows us to view computing through distinct levels and trace its evolution. So computing began at a mechanical level, yes, then evolved information level, human level, and now community level. Okay, so uh, basically this will be the end of the lecture. So any question, any contribution you want to make in respect of the, the contemporary view of information systems, and also social technical systems. And of course, uh, yes, yeah, these ones. And then yes, survivor as well. If you have any question contribution, please you can go ahead and then bring it up. Okay, so there is a book, uh, Loudin and Loudin that we are using. Uh, I don't remember the, the paragraph, but there is uh, an article there. I want you to go and read this. Later, next week, I'll ask some questions on that. Running the business from the palm of your hand. Let me see if I have the book here. I tried to upload the book. I was, oh, I've already done it in Sakai. Please check Sakai. I think it's already in Sakai. Let me see if I can find uh, the book. This MIS. Uh, materials. Okay, so loud and loud. Yes, so this is the book. It's on, also on a, you, many of the things we are doing here, you can go read the book. Mm -hmm. So, There is a book you are using. Organization Marketing and Network Enterprise. So I've shared a book on Sakai, I think. If you remember this diagram, the interdependence. So if you want more details, please get a book. There's a lot of information there that can help you. Okay. So I put a book on uh, Sakai. Please go and read it. Otherwise, the class cap, cap, uh, the class rep can see me uh, come to my office and I'll give it. Or maybe I'll probably have to create, link you to it on Google Scholar or Google Docs. They just pick it up. All right. So any question, any issues, anything you want to raise? Okay, there's a hand up. Uh, ben, uh, Alex, Alex Nakon. Alex. All right, sir. Um, mine is about the software that you access to download on the link that you gave us. 
uh, yes, the yes, innovator. Yes. Uh, I don't know if others have the same challenge. I, I had a challenge downloading it. Okay. I was so expecting you, after. Yeah, so you don't worry. Eh? When we are closer to doing business process modeling, uh, I'll use some of you can try. If you're not able to do it, those who, don't, who are having challenges, uh, I'll help resolve it before we start the class. Are you okay? Okay. Uh, yeah. So another comment I yes. want to pass is about the Finland thing. You 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 said yes. uh, you don't know why they are not known to the world, although they are up there when it comes to uh, technological yeah, infrastructure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, yes, don't you yes. think it's yes. a government right. policy? Don't you think it's a government policy uh, so that well, they don't get a lot of people coming into the country? So that they can manage the uh, available resource they have for the, the little population that they have already said that the, their population is very small. Yeah, well, it may be so. In fact, even getting into that country is very difficult. They don't give people visa anyhow. It's very, very difficult. You may be right in a way, but not all, because you know uh, there are certain things. It's just knowledge contribution it has to put out there. If I tell you a lot of inventions they have done, which if you ask someone in Ghana here, even if you ask someone in Ghana here, where is Nokia coming from? Nokia, the company Nokia, the person will say US. But US is from there. There's another company which is doing well in, the, in Europe called Zen Robotics. They are one of the leading robotics companies. And they are number one ship builders. But all these, if I don't tell you, you wouldn't know. But you see, their nature, the things themselves, their nature, they are very shy and close to themselves. So they are not the type of the, they are not too sociable. Even when you are there, you can even be in the same space with the friend for a week and then you not talk to each other. Unless, of course, you approach him or her. Otherwise, you will not he or she will not talk to you. So it is just their nature. And because of that, it has been translated into most of the things that they do. And there's a lot of invention. Even SSL, this is a secure socket layer. It was invented by a friend. A line also operating system, line of travel from you know, if you know a lot of inventions in the IP space, but people don't know them by that. And Sweden is rather, you know, they are more or less like brothers with Sweden and the Norway. But Sweden is more aggressive and sociable. So Sweden is more popular, and people know Sweden more than the Finns. Okay. So uh let me see. The innovator, I will check it and I'll try to handle the issue before uh, we start the process uh, modeling. Uh, I think last two years after taking this process modeling, some of them have started, you know, some students came to me that they have started using, uh, using the knowledge to make money. Some of them are using it, uh, modeling processes for businesses, writing business uh, plans. And then uh, there was one lady who was a marketing manager came to me, he used it in his firm. And then uh, it was, I mean, it was great, you know, something like that. I remember she came to me, you know, she modeled their processes and she asked me to uh, look at it and then strengthen it for him because she was going to make a presentation. So and when we get there, I will entreat you to pay attention. Usually I prefer that it's face to face. I hope that we have that class on face to face uh, so that, you know, it's a bit uh, flexible with the. Uh, the business process.